Besides uh, loving to program, uh, I have a passion for sort of natural history and evolution. I read every book I can find on natural history, evolutionary psychology. If you don't think evolution is amazing, something wrong with you. It's, 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 it's the way nature programs. I mean, how awesome, more awesome can you get? And a reminder to all Astro personnel, control room, if you require RF data, be prepared to switch over your Grafana sources and liftoff. They're using Grafana to launch rockets? This is amazing. Many of you have heard of Call of Duty. Grafana has officially entered popular culture. An Australian company who were using Grafana uh, to track ambulances, gave them visibility into where their ambulances were, they could track them in real time, gave them all of their stats that they were collecting from the ambulances, so the equipment they had on board, what speed was it doing, did it have its lights on, and it was just a complete solution that had been built uh, on top of Grafana. Beehive monitoring system using Grafana. How it works is you basically put a weighing scale under the beehive, and if the queen leaves, then the, the, the bees will swarm and the, the, the weight will drop. The story he could tell from looking at just a graph uh, was, was, was really surprising. Relief efforts when you see Grafana being used to track how many vaccinations have been given or how many people have been rescued from, an, from a disaster area. There was a company that was um, putting shipping containers in the middle of Paris and then growing strawberries inside those containers. And they monitored all of their kind of HVAC and hydroponic system using Grafana. And I just remember that being like really interesting because it was a non-observability use case, right? This is kind of an IoT use case almost. The thing about dashboards in the wild and the thing about Grafana is there's nothing in Grafana that's specific to IT or observability, right? It's just a, a great general purpose visualization tool. I think the, the shift from like the early years to like the hyper growth, I think that has been, I don't know, like one of the most impactful experiences of my life. The thing I, I think I reflect about is that when you're, you're, you start a startup and people say, oh, you should do one thing and do it really well. And uh, at the time it felt like, no, what the hell, we're just doing lots of things and maybe not all that well all the time. <laughs> um, but that turned out to be the thing that, the one thing that we did really well, that we, we did lots of things. Prometheus, as we talked about before, is a good example of where uh, uh, you know, we were able to follow the waves. It was clear relatively early that I would need to, to work towards making Grafana the default visualization of Prometheus, because Prometheus desperately needed something better than Promdash, something maybe not even better, but easier to use. The challenge with Promdash was, you know, you basically would write it in code, right? Like it would take time. With Grafana, I just like drag and drop, just build a dashboard really quickly, um, you know, could play with it. And, and they just looked so much better than anything we'd built with Promdash with like a tenth of the effort. The growth of Prometheus and of Grafana have always been really tightly coupled. So making, uh, making Grafana the default of, of Prometheus had an outsized impact on Grafana Labs. Um, now, causal, many of you know, uh, Tom Wilkie and uh, his partner David, uh, really into Prometheus. They have a hosted offering. Um, we've been talking to those guys um, for the last uh, several weeks. I first met Tom a few months ago. Me and Tom Wilkie, we had a startup uh, that worked sort of in a similar space. We tried to build metrics, logs, and traces together. Uh, it was a time when three pillars of observability came up and we wanted to unify all of those. And then um, we went to a conference called FOSDAM, Belgium. The Grafana team was there and we ran into them, uh, chatted with them, and turns out they also wanted to build metrics, locks and traces. And so uh, then we decided to uh, join forces. So when we joined with this vision of bringing uh, metrics, locks and traces together, we also wanted to get kind of Grafana uh, off the wall a bit, because at the time, Grafana was very popular in sort of hanging in sort of engineering offices on the wall, right? Like displaying the company stats, right? Or engineering stats. But we wanted it to be more uh, the center of troubleshooting. And when you troubleshoot, metrics is only the entry point, right? And then you go to logs, and then you maybe figure out with tracing what's going on in your, in your uh, distributed system. And so these parts didn't exist in Grafana, so we wanted to build those out.
Like a couple of months after I joined, uh, I went to a conference with Grafana to Fosden and there was a talk about obs our observability stack and how you can jump between metrics and walks and traces. And he was mentioning a lot of things like this is what we want to do and like this is like our future. At the time, like there wasn't any tempo. Loki was very new. We didn't have tracing visualization. And just looking back, we did all of the things that we wanted and like so much more. We always had this vision of like a Prometheus inspired logging system. Uh, you know, maybe a Prometheus inspired tracing system. And this came together with what we now refer to as kind of LGTM. Um, and that's more than just the backends, like it was also bringing logging and tracing to Grafana so that you could connect Grafana to, you know, to Loki originally, right, to Tempo for tracing. But at the same time, we made it so it worked really well with Splunk, with, with, with Elastic, with our big tent philosophy, with, with any of the data sources. You know, in hindsight, that was really the start of like Act 2 for the company when Grafana became a lot more than just metrics, when we added logs, when we added tracing, when it became a real observability solution. You know, going from sitting in Torkel's kitchen and, and uh, uh, being pretty happy with where you were, thinking, wow, Grafana is like, you know, pretty popular. But this the rocket ship, like, I think that was definitely a surprise. Seeing you know, the growth is, is definitely surreal. Um, you know, I don't believe it sometimes. I didn't expect Grafana to grow that quickly. This is just ridiculous and magnificent. It's really incredible. It, it translates to millions and millions of users using this to, to make their stuff run. I think the thing that makes Grafana really different to everything else out there is the fact that we, you know, we prioritize interoperability with this wider ecosystem. You can connect like hundreds of different data sources to Grafana, and we're pretty much the only tool in the world that does that. The Big Tent approach has really kind of defined uh, a big part of what Grafana is. Almost anyone can bring Grafana into their organization and really start to immediately get benefit by attaching it to where their data already lives. The product obviously involved from targeting mostly open source enthusiasts to be more focused on the wider audience these days and an even richer plugin system which we're currently working on so we can extend Grafana in ways we can't imagine today. The word we're using for it is observability platform. I'm super excited because I think that's gonna give the same effect that plugins did where we can't really see all the potential but we can still be the UI for so many different ways of uh, storing data and reacting to data and integrating data. Super, super happy about that. I am just super proud what, what, what we built and, and the people we have, and it's beyond anything that I, I imagined at the start. Torkel really caring about this so much, still does, still does. He's much more interested in the way that someone uses Grafana than building software for the sake of building software, which is great. That's what you want. No, I, uh, I still love playing with Grafana. It's, it's what I do.